Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna see if we can take this windmill blade up here from the 1930s, almost 1940, I think it's about a 1939, and duplicate it. I can't find anybody with a CNC machine that wants to go off these drawings that I was uh, sent and I can't find anybody that wants to duplicate it. I'm just too small of an order, I guess, too much time pissing around. Uh, so we're gonna try and make one ourselves. So we're gonna grab some cedar, plane it down, grab some measurements here, take this off and see what we can come up with. This wind charger is from the 70s. It's a later design, but I'm using this blade from the 30s on it because I couldn't find one for this one. It was broken. As you can see, I've glued it. That glue's coming off. And I have a piece of safety wire on here because it was on there from when I got it in Saskatchewan just in case it flew apart. This one is laminated, but I'm gonna make one out of solid cedar if I can find one without any lots. So I'm just gonna take an approximate uh, reading of length and our width in here. And we're gonna plane down a couple boards and get them a big rectangle and then we can go from there. Okay, I got the table saw, the planer, everything cleaned up. It's so cold out, crappy. We had no snow last week and now we got snow. <laughs> it got like 16 inches the other day. Anyways, I got this all dimensioned out. I cut this in certain ways because obviously I couldn't find clear lumber. This one is just about clear besides that which I'm not concerned about because it's a very, very tight knot and it's in a good spot that when I put this blade on top for my template, it's really gonna get tapered out in there and be really thin anyways. Okay, so I've got the blade perfectly centered. I've drawn out the center hole here, which I will drill out after, but I have to you uh, precisely make those two holes in there and I've just taken up my 5 16 drill bit here, and I'm gonna use this as my drilling template to get them straight. And I'll just put a couple holes through because I need that on there so I can take measurements from that hole accurately for where to start my tapering and shaping and all that jazz. Beautiful. Okay, so since both sides are different on this blade, to line it up, you know, I don't want to screw up and have it so one side, you know, I can't remember what I start shaping, whatever. So anyways, one right there, one, one, just so you can't mess it up. So then if I flip this over, you know, our bolt holes are the wrong way, but, if I went, oh, actually, if I went like that, they won't line up either. But this way, they could line up upside down. So I'm flipping it to number one this way. That'll solve all my problems. To get it all centered, I've put my drill bit in here and that holds it nice and tight. So what I'm gonna do now, so I can start shaping is I'm gonna start with this side with the number two side or number one, however you wanna look at it. And the last time I attempted to make a blade, I would just mark on here with my square where to start tapering down to what point, bring it out to here, and then when I start grinding on it and, and working on it, I know where to go to. But I'm gonna try this out of my old mathematics set. 
one thing that I've held on to. Actually, maybe not. I might have bought it because they were like $3 for one. So I'm going to try and actually just scribe this and go with it. And we'll see what we come up with. Not sure how this is going to work, but we'll see. So that should be pretty close right there to the edge. So I got to make this just a little bit wider. Right about there, that should do it. This pencil, it can always come back off, so. That actually looks pretty nice. The only tough thing is this wants to move. So I'm gonna go get a screwdriver and tighten up that screw. All right, well, that gives me a pretty accurate pattern right there. Okay, and this one, I did it. This one's a sharp taper, and that's where I can come to. This here is where the taper starts. So this is where I'm just going to start tapering. Again, it's a lot of hit and miss, but as you can see, it tapers down into here. So that's what I continued on into here. And then it stays about, you know, looks like a, close to a quarter inch, three sixteenths away from this edge and goes, and that's where I'll just bring a nice taper up and it tapers down from the other end just finished up pulling off the weight from the other side because i couldn't set this down proper so we're just gonna get to tracing out this side too and see what we come up with that's scribed out as you can see this edge is really rough here and warped and stuff so i'm just gonna take an average from there to there and i'm gonna you know straighten out this line and go off of that i'll i'll make it a nice good line probably averages you know in and out an eighth of an inch with my warps here so we'll take an average probably start with right here is about the most accurate measurement and i'll just make it a nice clean line across there so after a little bit of time off camera we've ended up with this i've done a lot of tracing scribing contemplating measuring you know doing a little bit of everything trying to figure out how these curves come into place i've i had to eyeball this you know when you're looking for a crown of a board i looked straight down the end of this on the flat until i couldn't see anymore and while this is up while my eye is has an edge on here i was looking and i wherever i could see it just start to curve i'd put a mark go farther put a mark go here put a mark did that on each side and they both come out opposite of each other which is perfect and I measured and I was within about a quarter inch of these end marks, which could really vary anyways where this tapers down. So I measured it, came up with an, you know, a 29 and a half or whatever it was. And I marked on each side at 29 and a half. And then I figured out, I measured to my last mark here where I seen on both sides, they were opposite from each other. And this was about two inches. This was about Two, or this was two inches this was two inches so i just came up with the two inches i put a dot here and here and then i took out my scribe again and i ran it down got it square here with a square and then i ran it down roughly like this i'm not i'm just looking into the camera and i went like this until it dropped off and then i came back and that's roughly what I got with my pencil marks. I did, you know, as you can see, I've done a ton of them. Some where I was a little bit off, didn't like them. And same with the other side, as you can see, I was a bit off. Uh, so once I got something I was happy with, I made a curve, highlighted it in marker to make it permanent. I'm going to take my belt sander and I'll go from my, you know, go on my angle down. We'll get into that after. Um, back to this side. This side's opposite of that. As you can see, I have a rough curve on each side. My measurements line up from each side. This side was a half inch measurement from here to here because this just so has a little bit of a taper on the top here for the last half inch. And then the rest is one angle down from here and from about here up tapers, which will be my next thing that I do. So from probably from about here to their tapers, but I'll just use the belt sander and I'll go in and basically I'll have the belt sander go on one angle from here all the way to here. And we're gonna just run all the way down. It makes a mess, 
but I have like 60 grit sandpaper, so it goes really quick, or 40 grit or something. It's just like taking a grinder to metal, it goes quick. Okay, so I traced out my other blades so I can make my duplicate, and I thought I would start on this. I'm using a 36 grit sandpaper made by Diablo. Man, it works good, guys. And I'm really happy with how it turned out pretty clear. A couple little knots that are not going to affect anything. So anyways, I got ahead of myself last night and off camera. I didn't want to look like, you know, complete newbie on this. So I did a little bit and got carried away and started off by just starting to shape this one. So I just, you know, I shaped until my line in here and uh, brought it down until this line was reappearing. And as you can see, I went right to this line and brought it up in the same as over there, what, how I'm gonna do it on that side. And then uh, as you can see, when I measured, when I drew, there was a line in the middle. So that's so when I taper this side into this side, it'll meet up and have a nice edge. So let's get to it and we're gonna get some hearing aids and <laughs> some uh, hearing protection, I should say. And we're gonna start on this. So we are shaped now. This didn't take too long. Uh, as you can see, I filmed that in two different clips and the it was about 12 minutes to do that all. So I'm really happy with it. It looks really good. Same with this side. And we got a lot more shaping to do. We got to flip it over and do the rest. But that's our biggest gouge doing that there. And the other side's a little bit more complicated, but not too bad. So I'm about ready to go, but what I found is the curve on here is not a central curve. It goes from a different location and tapers down. So I roughly figured it out, copied it over that it's two inches over, just like my mark in here. So I'm just gonna mark at two inches here. I like using the marker because you can see it through your sanding and when you get to it, you can wipe it away and you can still see it because it's actually embedded into the wood, the dye or whatever you call it, the ink. And you can go until you taper that off. This isn't, you know, it's not a rocket ship, so it's got to be accurate, but not that perfect. So you just go until the marks are gone and you know you're within that, you know, 32nd of an inch or something. I'm trying not bore you too much with the footage, but 
there's old, there's the new. I think I got my curve pretty good there too. Looks like it comes up a little bit on the end there. But overall, for a homemade blade with a sander, this thing's going really well. Really happy with it. So everything's coming out good. That knot came out, I'll just fill that with something. I'm not too concerned, just put some epoxy in there. Like I said, it's, it's not a concern of mine. Let's get to doing this and I guess we're pretty well done. I'll get to doing some better sanding on it and do some better sandpaper. Oh, I noticed that I didn't get into there quite enough. That's fine. But I'll get some finer sandpaper and we'll make this thing a done deal. Okay, with that all shaped, I went and did the other side here quickly. Figured since you watched me do the other side, you probably don't want to watch me do this side too. Anyways, it shaped out really well. As you can see, it's very nice and flat. Same with under here. Everything's nice and straight. Really happy with it. I'm gonna put in some finer sandpaper and give this thing a finish cut and try and get all the curves nice. But otherwise, man, this went really well. We'll get to putting some stain on it or varnish or something and we'll get to balancing it. I have yet to find a sander, at least in my tools, that can do this round you know i have a palm sander an orbital one my belt sander a bunch of them but this cedar so soft to work with and going from 36 grit this is 120 grit you know this doesn't have to be a showpiece but it really smooths it out and as you could see when i was uh using the belt sander i was going like this really quick trying to get a curve off of you'd see I'd go at an angle and then a different angle. Then I'd take the top off of that and then I'd try and smooth it out. Then I go the other way and it got it really close, but this makes it perfect. You just, I've just been going like this. There we go. A few minutes of that. You know that's really good gonna take this in once i get it all sanded and fill that knot and get to staining but it's really uh really come out good i sand it this gonna flip it over and do the other side hi am how you doing buddy cold out today huh you want to go inside i let you in he doesn't like the tripod With a sander and a little determination, I think they turned out pretty good. Well, if you've tagged along this long, thank you for watching, guys. We just got the stain all on here, and I just got the two blades up here to compare them side by side just for fun. And I just got them sitting on the back of the wood stove. There's an air gap there where the blower blows around if we have that on. Anyways, uh, it's all turned out really good. The stain looks like clear in here. I don't know why, and it looks funny. I guess it's just dark I got these lights on so anyways 
we're just having a coffee getting going here for the morning i woke up early and got this done and really happy how it turned out and uh yeah thanks for playing along okay so we're dried up here and i'm just letting this thing do its thing see how it's going up and down what i've done is i've taken you know just a i've put a punch in here and now from factory this one here it had a piece of metal like that on it well that is the piece of metal so i took it and put it on there because this wanted to you know it wanted to go down to the bottom so i put it there and it seems to have balanced out there for now so i think if i shift it to the side just a little bit it'll make it good so anyways i'll uh get a piece of metal like that and screw it on in fitting fashion i have this old uh rod it's off of a windmill off of an old heller aller baker um, it's bent because it fell and i pulled it apart when i bought the thing i've since parted it out anyways i've had this rod around for, for a long time and it's about what we need there it's a little heavier uh so anyways what i'm gonna do it tapers down here and where it's bent here just around there i'm just gonna cut a little piece of it off because i'm never gonna reuse this and we're gonna use it as a weight it's pretty well balanced i'm going to use these brass screws because they're nice and lightweight and they won't rust but that's rust gonna rust anyways but uh <clears throat> it's so pitted and old i don't think it'll cause any rust issues like stains or anything not that it's a big deal but i think i'm good about there i'm gonna throw some screws in there and call it a day all right we're at top of the tower i just I actually had to run a bigger bit through because my hole was just a little bit small on the center there. It was just so it wouldn't slide over the hub. Anyways, got that, got that all bolted on and, you know, everything is nice in here. It doesn't touch the brake. Everything seems real straight. The other one always warped and this brake is a little bit warped from when it fell. But otherwise, we're looking good. So this nice new blade on here will... Hopefully be getting some wind and we'll be able to see how it spins. Works beautiful. Slight shake, I might have to mess with my balance a little bit. But the design, obviously since it was copied from a regular wind charger, is working amazing. This is just a very slight breeze too. It seems to work almost better than the old one. I don't know if it's because this cedar is so light, if it makes a difference or not. It's really not too much of a difference though, but either way, right now the wind is kind of obstructed, but we're working good. Both of the windmills are loving it, and we're going to get some good wind today. So, thanks for tagging along on this journey. I was just having fun making a blade. I was hoping somebody else in the world would enjoy watching it, and uh, if you did, I hope you did. So, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned, and we'll be uploading some more stuff soon.